Hey guys, real quick, I had a question come at me from Beatrice talking about how to calculate respiratory rate or tidal volume if you know the patient's minute ventilation, okay, or their minute volume, okay. So this goes back to what um, I uh, like to argue is probably uh, maybe one of the most important formulas, if not the most important formula that you will learn uh, in your respiratory therapy education and utilize on a regular basis as a respiratory therapist is understanding minute ventilation. What makes it up? what it does to uh, CO2 and pH, and how you can manipulate it to achieve those numbers, okay? So in my opinion, most important uh, formula. Now, we're gonna bring this back to you, back to the basics of what is the minute ventilation formula. And if you remember that, then you understand that it's, and again, I get a marker that doesn't work. Here we go. <clears throat> Respiratory rate times tidal volume equals minute volume, right? That's the formula. Now, if you understand that, then you can switch that formula around multiple different ways to solve for whatever you want to. If you know the tidal volume and you want to solve for respiratory rate, then you just have to get tidal volume. You just have to get respiratory rate over here by itself, right? So if you divide both sides by tidal volume, you'll see where respiratory rate equals minute ventilation over tidal volume. And then the opposite way around, if you know your tidal volume and you need to get your respiratory, I'm sorry, if you know your respiratory rate and you need to get your tidal volume, then you just divide both sides by respiratory rate and it'll leave you with this. Okay, so those are your formulas. Those are the ways, those are the three ways you can, you can rearrange that formula to solve for whatever, whatever uh, variable you're looking to solve for. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and give you some examples. If you have a great patient breathing with a respiratory rate equals 20 and a minute volume equals, uh, let's just say, 9 liters then what is your tidal volume, right? That's what we need to know. So if we'll set this up, if you remember tidal respiratory rate times tidal volume equals nine liters. Divide both sides by 20, and you'll get tidal volume equals 0 0.450. And your tidal volume is 0 0.450. Now, if you want to check yourself, you just plug 0.45 back in here, multiply it times 20 and see if you don't get 9. And you will, okay? Let's say we have a minute ventilation of 8 liters per minute, and we patient is breathing a tidal volume approximately, um, let's go, uh, tidal volume is. 0.5 liters. Okay? So now we're going to set this formula up the exact same way. Respiratory rate times tidal volume equals 8 liters. Divide both sides by 0.5 and our respiratory rate equals 16. 16 times 0.5 equals 8. I'll give you guys a little trick here. Anytime you're multiplying something times 0.5, it's the same as dividing it by 2. Okay, so in this case, your respiratory rate is 16 times 0.5 liters. Your minute ventilation is 8 liters per minute. I'll ask questions like that all the time. Hey, what's the, what's the patient's on a, on a rate of 20 and... Uh, they have a, a tidal volume of 500. What's their minute ventilation? You pull the calculator out. 10. You're exactly right. Because 20 times 0.5 or 20 divided by 2 equals 10. Okay. Now let me give you a real life practical where you might actually uh, use this formula to figure this out. Okay. You have a patient doing a spontaneous breathing trial. Okay. And you go in the room and you find their minute ventilation to be 
uh, six liters per minute. I'm using easy numbers it's just so you get the idea, okay? So you, you find a minute ventilation to be six liters per minute. And their respiratory rate equals, uh, let's just go with, let's just go with 20. Okay, so the rate is 20 breaths per minute. Now, you're looking at their tidal volume, and one of them is 500, and the next one is 200, the next one is 400, the next one is 300, the next one is 350, the next one is 270. You get the picture here, right? The tidal volumes are all over the place, okay? But you need to calculate the patient's RSBI, the Rapid Shallow Breathing Index, Okay, so what you need to have now is a, uh, a working tidal volume. Well, if you take that low tidal volume, you're going to have a bad RSVI. That may not be accurate reflection of the patient. If you take that five or 600 tidal volume, you may have a really good RSVI that may not be that accurate of the, of the patient. Okay, the patient may not actually be that good. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you have to take it in and use an average spontaneous tidal volume. That's why when you walk in that room, you want to grab your minute ventilation at rest and your respiratory rate at rest before you start messing with the patient and get them all worked up and they start breathing faster and more shallow and all this stuff, right? So you walk in, you find them breathing 20 times in six liters. You need to calculate an RSVI. You need an average spontaneous tidal volume. How do I do that? Well, you have the numbers you need right there. You have them, okay? Tidal volume equals minute ventilation divided by respiratory rate. So, six divided by 20 equals 0.3. So our spontaneous tidal volume is 0.3 and you just use the minute ventilation formula to calculate an average spontaneous tidal volume okay because you have to calculate the RSBI so let's finish it out our RSBI formula is rate over tidal volume in liters so it's 20 divided by 0.3 And that comes out to 67 is our RSVI. 105 is our mark there that you want to be below. And so this patient looks like, at least from this part of the example, that at least from that indicator, they would be acceptable and ready to um, excavate. I want to do another video on RSVI and talk about this because there's some tricks to this that... Uh, that can really be beneficial to you and give you quick ways to approximate and understand how to remember the formula. So we're going to come back to that. But the focus of this video was how do I get tidal volume or rate from minute ventilation. You always have to have two of the three numbers. Respiratory rate times tidal volume equals minute ventilation. You have to have two of those numbers, of those three numbers, and then you can solve for whichever one you don't have. Okay, I hope this helps. Leave your comments, questions below. Hey, hit that subscribe button right there, I think, and watch this other video right here, if you will. Maybe you'll learn something. I hope you do. And maybe leave me some comments and give me some more um, platforms to go forward with in other videos. Have a great day, guys.